Hey YouTubers! Welcome to this video where we're going to have a quick look at the arrival of the HP Prime graphing calculator and a little tour of it and review. What I hope to do is obviously I don't like doing an unboxings but as it has arrived in retail packaging I'll just undo the retail packaging quickly on the bench so we can see what it comes with. We'll then go and have a closer look. I'll make sure it's charged. We'll have a closer look and see the, the initial functionality and how well it works and how easy it is to work with. What I'd also like to discuss is kind of the HP philosophy or thinking behind this calculator. They've got a lot of work to do to kind of unseat uh, Texas Instruments. Texas Instruments have a very strong handhold over the market in North America, in particular in the schools and colleges. So they obviously want to try and unseat Texas Instruments and try and gain some of the market share there. Now Texas Instruments have done a very good job in terms of the calculators and machines they've had up to date. They've got loads of teacher aids and tutorials online so they've certainly done a good job. So HP's got a fair bit of work ahead of them. Now with the HP Prime I think what they're hoping to do for one they've got a very slim streamlined package we're going to have a look at it put it next to kind of Texas Instruments latest beast the TI Inspire CX CAS just as a comparison for size many people these days are moving towards even using their smartphones and tablets for advanced calculation functions so they really are trying to have a nice device it's got a navigation pad it's got a color screen it's got a touch screen they've gone to the effort of trying to make this device easy to use yet still having the advanced functions that people who have used HP calculators in the past have become used to so it'll still have RPN it's built so that scientists engineers in advanced fields can use it but yet they're hoping it'll find a place right through early school and into colleges now the one challenge with calculators like that like this that have these advanced features is that they're not allowed in a lot of exams because if you've got a computer al algebraic system and advanced functions examiners don't want those calculators but HP have thought that out and if it's used correctly in the education environment with it's got wireless connectivity kits so that teachers and tutors can wirelessly um, connect and communicate with devices and likewise students can do that back to the teacher they can also configure these two particular exam modes they can limit the functionality they can switch off CAS they can lock it down they can get it to clear the memory of those devices in the uh, examination room and then securely tie them down and even have them uh, flash a code so that when they're looking across the classroom they can see that all the calculators are in that mode because they're all in sync and flashing so that's something that HP is hoping to do with this device but anyway let's get down onto the bench have a closer look and then we'll try and do some basic basic arithmetic and graphing on it to see how well it works right so here we go this is the retail packaging it comes in this uh, bubble or blister pack it notes on the front that it's obviously got CAS or computer algebra system it's got a touch screen and keypad and this is powered by a lithium ion rechargeable battery now as I said as I noted in my first video review of graphing calculators this is something we want to see in the long term how well that's going to work that can potentially catch you off guard I've already noted that with uh, TI's Inspire the it, it claims a hundred hours of use but if you leave it on the shelf you can find pick it up and find that you need to recharge it and people say that if they're using their calculators heavily at school or co college need to charge it every single week so we'll soon see how long the HP holds up in that regard um, on the back it just gives you some information about its key features obviously the, the CAS the graphing it's got color graphing it's got some very advanced graphing and 3D graphing it's got a trig solver where you can actually put in some uh, move change angles and make they what they're trying to do here is make maths far more visual visual and easy to deal with to kind of entice younger people to get into it so it doesn't seem that intimidating now I'm going to be intrigued by that because I'm kind of I've got a refound passion to learn more about maths and dig up my old knowledge from school so will a device like this help we'll see I'm going to take it out the pack and then we can have a closer look at it 
Right, so eventually, as, it, as is the case with most of this retail packaging, it's always a mission to get into. Um, just a simple rip tab on the back or something like that would just make it so much easier so you don't risk cutting into the bits and pieces. Fortunately, I haven't done that, but nonetheless. Right, so the, the first thing out of the box then is we get this, obviously, a, a starter's guide. Yeah, it's a basic start guide to get you up and running. It then comes with a connectivity kit, an emulator and quick start guide on CD. Apparently from the information that I've been reading and watching, um, certainly this is very powerful. You can program it, but to program it, you want to kind of be doing that from your uh, computer and then uploading that to the calculator. Right, we, so we've got a box with a zoom, yeah. Let's have a closer look. If this one comes with a North American uh, power adapter, obviously a USB power plug. Then also has this cable, interesting end to it. Just it's got a rubberized cap to it to the USB plug-in. There you go. And then it's obviously got the kind of sub-miniature um, USB connector to actually charge and for connectivity. Warranty. And then what they have done, okay, the first thing I always do these things, thankfully this is made to come off. I hate the, the protective cover. So that is the first look at it. And of course what they have gone and done, a big change from let's say the 50G, is they've now moved to one of these sliding protector cases. If you watched my previous um, kind of review of graphing calculators, the HP stood out as the one that had a very nice cover and case that it went into, but of course that could potentially get in the way, and folks these days probably want something easy like one of these covers to get into. So here we go, the lithium ion battery is in here and is removable, um, but obviously, as I said, that's going to be a challenge for the future. So I'll just put it down here and we'll take a closer look. So right here we go, I've removed the cover just so that it's at its slimmest and best looking. What we are going to do, I'm going to have it, I kind of put it side by side with the TI Inspire just so you, that you can see the size differences. We'll have a look at the weights as well. But for now let's just have a closer look at the actual HP. And just taking a closer look at the actual layout and build quality, I must say it certainly does have a nice finish kind of with this brushed aluminium. The keys do have a very nice feel to them, easy to use and nice and large. Compared with the 50G, the 50G keys tend to be a little bit smaller, so very nice. On the top here you can see uh, the LEDs I was talking about when it's in exam mode, so these would presumably be flash a certain code so that in a classroom the tutor or teacher can actually see that they are set up in a, and in the uh, correct maths mode. But certainly a very nice feel in the hand. So there you go. It has to be said it is a nice slim device. It certainly has a, feels fairly light. If I compare put the Inspire in my hand I can certainly feel a difference. I'm going to get a scale out just so we can weigh them. In terms of physical size, you can see if I put them side by side like that, there is a little little difference, top and bottom. In terms of thickness, then yes, the Inspire is a little bit thicker. This certainly would feel like perhaps like a larger smart cell phone and I think that's what HP were also aiming for is that obviously a lot of folks these days can use their uh, smartphones and phablets or what have you as calculating devices and for those who still want to stick to having a separate calculator um, then this becomes an, a reasonably nice slimline easy device to work with. They certainly seem to have achieved that. This is a nice little package. Um, it certainly feels a little more handleable than perhaps the Inspire. That again is my own subjective point of view. Others may actually vary. Right, so I've got the scale out. We'll first put the Texas Instruments on there. 
So the Texas Instruments weighs 236 grams or 8.3 ounces. The HP Prime is 6.9 pounds or 195 grams. So 195 grams versus the 236, there's a little bit in it. Would you really feel a difference in the hand? You can feel a slight difference, but I think uh, you wouldn't certainly judge your purchase based on the weight. Right, so we'll just switch it on for the first time just to see how it does come up. The on-off key is down at the kind of bottom left over here. Okay, heavens, okay, it starts up very quickly asking for language selection. Ah. So obviously the touch screen works, it's got uh, low battery, so I'm going to connect it to a power source just so that we can go further. Just out of interest, the kind of USB power plug that is supplied with it, I can see is obviously uh, international, it goes from 100 to 240 volts. Uh, obviously 5 volt at 1 amp is what it supplies. It does have this universal plug, so obviously in different parts of the world they'll supply it with a, um, a different plug. It has this rubber boot around the USB which says on there remove rubber cap uh, when connected to a PC. So I'm not exactly sure why they've got that there to give it a cozy fit perhaps onto the actual plug itself but uh, let's power it up so we can continue. Right so we're powered up. I'll just push the on button as I traditionally know that's a clear button and then it looks like we're into the actual work screen itself. Now I do know that the HP Prime is designed with two workspaces. So you've got this general first workspaces obviously where, where you can do what they would call exact uh, with exact maths and then they've got the CAS workspace for approximate maths. So let's just see if we just start do some uh, simple arithmetic. So as you can see it comes up on the command line at the bottom here and the enter key over here is where we go and enter to get an answer and as you can see we come up with an answer on the screen. I'll bring you in a little closer to see that. Right so the next little bit of arithmetic that I'm going to enter is one that I was doing on the other calculators in the review is just to enter this so that to see how it displays and how it formats on the actual screen. Right and I can already tell from entering this it's a little bit different from what I'm used to using the 50G but so the and I'm sure there are a number of ways to actually enter numbers on here. So as you can see it actually comes up it's got that help screen where you can actually enter uh, numerators, denominators and obviously setting up for integration differentiation. So they certainly seem to have a nice template here to actually enter your various functions or arithmetic. So there, as I use the division sign, it's not doing a straightforward divide, it's doing the kind of numerator denominator. So there you go, I've entered the actual arithmetic and there it comes up with the answer and that's how it's displayed. So driving that was a little bit different from the, the equation writer that the 50G has and again that's going to take time perhaps for me to customize myself with the layout and the tools they have on this one. But nonetheless it has got a nice, fairly nice display. Um, the keys, I have to, has to be said, do feel nice to actually using the keys and I'll show those again when we do some graphing. Right, so some of the key points to note on the keyboard in terms of navigation around this, and I'll show you the screen in a moment, is the two work areas I was talking about. You've got the CAS work area and then you've got your home screen. You've also then got apps which will bring up your main apps display and then a toolbox which brings up a menu system and then a contextual help. You then also have, you've obviously got several functions assigned to the keys. You've got this orange alpha key over here to obviously to get to your alpha keys. And you've got a shift blue shift key to get your blue functions that are noted on the keys. As I said, you've got your enter key up here. And you've got a, an answer key, which is a second function key down here. So looking at the calculator at the moment, the workspace that I was actually working in would be the home key. Pushing the CAS key brings up 
the actual CAS workspace again where you can actually sit in and obviously still enter arithmetic um, but you've got your more advanced computer algebraic system sat over here you've then got and I said if you switch back to home you come back here and you can copy and grab things in between the two workspaces it has that functionality you've got this menu key and as you can see when you bring that up you can say get from home or get from CAS so if I just escape out of that and go to the CAS environment and push the menu button it says get from home and if I enter on that it pulls up this window where I presume we can obviously go and select as you can see you can go and copy and select so if I enter on that bang it brings it into the CAS environment so they've made that fairly easy it's like cutting and pasting between uh, different applications and that's what this is is basically it's a mini computer running uh, applications which hopefully and presumably you can inter they can interact between each other we've then got our apps button which brings up this main display over here and what they've done they've gone and color coded the various applications to group them together so you've got your graphing in blue you've got your special functions they've got geometry you've got a, a proper working spreadsheet you've got statistical functions you've got a data streamer which actually where you can plug in external sensors and actually collect data you've got some solving functions you've got some ex uh, quadratic explorer um, you've got your triangle solver finance linear explorer parametric polar and sequencing and again obviously a touch display so we can simply touch the display and go into those and as you can see over here this is where they've got this very nice graphical display for doing uh, geometry or trig where you can actually go and enter your various parameters for let's say the triangle and solve them right here on the screen right so if we take a look at this triangle solver what they've done again they made it very easy you've got the diagram over here representing the lower case obviously representing the actual lengths of the sides the upper case are the angles within the triangle so I can go and enter let's say I've got uh, the length of A and B and the angle of C we'll just enter some values in there so I enter 5 I push enter um, then go down to it says length of B we'll just enter and let's say now I want to jump to the angle of A let's put an angle of let's say 32 we go OK and then I hit the solve here on the screen and bang it then fill in, fills in the rest of the information so a really simple uh, template if you will to, to go and solve these kinds of geometric problems again on the screen so obviously the, the one handy thing you can obviously navigate with the kind of pad over here moving around the screen you can obviously use your finger as well which is I must say and it works really well it's just like using a smartphone or a tablet for that matter so let's just see if we go into graphing right so if I want to do just quickly do some simple graphing and enter some simple functions we'll go ahead on the actual command line at the bottom here um, you can see they've got X so I'm merely going to touch uh, say that right we want to work there X and it comes up on the command line um, we'll go squared minus 2 uh, okay for that onto the second one so we'll edit that we'll say a simple uh, X plus 2 okay that and then we can say why not sine of x sine x okay on the machine over here it has a button right here that says plot so we'll try that wow that was immediate I've not seen any of the calculators plot that quickly in time to come we're going to put them side by side to compare how far that fast they graph and it would have been one of the things that I said that you also wouldn't to judge, want to judge your the reason to buy a calculator however once it gets to more advanced graphing which this can do then that processing power might come into play so wow here we go <laughs> be nice if I could kind of pinch grab and zoom but it doesn't do that yet but certainly you can actually move around the actual function and I think what you can do you can obviously go and tap on the screen and kind of select your functions that you want to trace so you can actually point around the screen wow I must say really nice and easy to move around 
a display like this and actually see what's going on. And let's go zoom, sent on cursor, yeah. So I must say, very nice. Right, and again, just jumping into some more of the kind of functionality on this, um, the zoom function, again, if we go back to the plot, um, and if we go into the menu, we could say zoom box, it'll say select a corner, I can select a corner on the screen, it says I go OK, select opposite corner, I can select down here, we've got the box, I go OK, it zooms in very quickly and nicely to that. I can then obviously go on to the trace and I can use the cursor to kind of trace down a function. So you can see the actual uh, pointer is on there and we've got the uh, the coordinates of where it is. The up and down keys go and select the different functions. So there we go, you can see it's connect, selected the sine x function and it's going along there. If I go back to this function over here, now that I've got it selected, I can go to the menu and say function and let's say select intersection and let's say see where it intersects, let's say just the x-axis bang and it gives us it tells us where the intersection is and if I click on the kind of plus over here it brings up a set of crosshairs so that you can actually see on the graph what it's referring to and of course then you can move around very easily. Has to be said um, when I initially heard this had a touch screen and what have you I thought it would be a bit of a gimmick but it certainly makes navigating around very easy. I'd say far easier than using the kind of touchpad and facilities that's on the Texas Inspire. But again, a very initial uh, subjective point of view and over time we'll begin to see how well it does work. Also, the one helpful thing to note is that they do have this help button here and as opposed to just bringing up an index which kind of you have to guide yourself through, it's contextual. So if I push help here while I'm in the graph function, you can clearly see it goes and tells you about the plot view and you can obviously easily navigate through this as it tells you, uh, gives you help related to that. Um, it's then got a tree here so literally you can, as you can see, you can go and navigate through this wonderful uh, tree system to get you through to the help place that you want if you weren't exactly in the context that you wanted to be. Then the calculator obviously has the all important settings button which is a second function of the home. So if we just go into there, the this screen very helpful in terms of obviously you want to check what angle measurement you're doing, your number format, entry. It's got several languages you can actually select from. So as you can see it's got uh, quite a few languages that it can be set to. If you do go into wrong language then obviously you just need to know you need to go into settings and it's literally you can obviously set it on this first screen over here. You can go and set your uh, default uh, decimal mark. You've got this is one of four pages. You can I think yes you can just scroll with your finger or you've got the navigation down here on the actual screen you can touch, you can flip through the actual pages themselves. So I must say very easy and intuitive to get through. You then have, it's got the uh, second function, you've got setup of your like plots and numbers so we'll just go quickly let's say to the plot and you can go and set up uh, the ranges of your plot. So certainly again right where you need them easy and accessible. Right then, one of the other apps as you saw was the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet apparently is very useful for statistics and entering information. Again, you can navigate it by sliding your finger around. Uh, when you start tapping on the screen, you get the command line that comes up. You enter and then you've obviously got a value in the cell. And the HP does have touch gestures. Now, earlier you saw that obviously in the graph thing, it would have been nice had it kind of done a pinch zoom, but each application potentially has its own touch gesture, whether it's to move around or interchange between screens. So here you can change, for instance, the width of the actual columns. I can then go pinch wide to adjust or obviously bring it back in to adjust the width of the column. So as you go through the applications, you obviously need to gain an understanding of what gestures on the screen actually work. Obviously the one thing that we HP will have retained is its RPM or reverse Polish notation. So if we go into the settings, we go down to entry, it's got textbook. 
um, we select that it's got algebraic and then RPN so we'll select RPN and then we'll go back to the home screen I don't see an OK so I assume we can just go back to the home screen if we go 8 enter 9 enter yeah it's putting them on the stack in the tr traditional RPN way and if I hit the multiplication button so there we go there's your RPN mode so certainly nothing lost there when you do go into your kind of uh, workspaces, so let's say we go back to the home screen, which is now set to RPN, you do have this little toolbox key down here at the bottom, and if you push that, that's where you get your menus where you've got all your functions noted. So as you can see, you've got maths functions, CAS functions, application functions, um, and you can obviously go into each of those to pull out various functions that you might want to actually work with. Right, and again, just to show the kind of power and ease that HP have built into this, they've got these templates which I used earlier when entering a numerator denominator. But if I select that and let's say I want to enter a matrix, I can go and select that. It brings it up down here. Now, bearing in mind that I'm in RPN mode, so I can let's say go and enter uh, a few values into a matrix. Let's say I want it to be a, a two by two matrix. I can then say enter and as you can see it brings that uh, two by two matrix up onto the stack. I, let's say I want to multiply that by six. So obviously then enter my value for ready for the RPN mode and the operation I'm going to multiply, bang, and it does it. So very easy to enter and get an answer for a function like that. Right then, so that was a very quick kind of first look at the HP Prime. I've literally only had a few minutes as I unwrapped it, switching it on to actually start using it. So I know I've got a, a learning curve to kind of get on top of this, but it's still a lot of that was fairly intuitive. It didn't take a lot of paging through the manual and actually walking through the screens to actually start using some of the functionality. And that's going to be the interesting thing to see as we go along because in the next video I'm going to put all the other graphing calculators up and define a function and graph them and see how easy it is perhaps to find intersections, uh, roots of those and start solving equations. So we'll see how that stacks up in this regard. But so far it looks like HP might have something interesting here. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you do want to support me, as I said, there will be a link below to my Amazon store where you can purchase this or one of the other graphing calculators. And do subscribe, and I'll see you soon for the next video. Cheers.